the compact disc, the CD, that disc that holds your band's favorite tracks. As we continue to progress into the second decade of the 21st century, we have slowly begun to forget about the physical form of music and have traded in for digital form, storing it onto a hard drive disc located within some fancy new device. So many of us still have this dying format lying around somewhere in our house, while others of us are slowly beginning to sell them off. The greatest part about the compact disc is that you can create backups of them. Essentially take the original, store it on your computer, and create extra discs of the original album whenever you want. Although many of us not know this lost art of creating backups, it is incredibly easy. In this instructional video, I will demonstrate how to rip, or transfer, the CD onto your computer. Then I will conclude by demonstrating how to burn, or transfer, the digital files onto the new compact disc. Ready to be popped into your boombox, or even your vehicle stereo, if you of course have a CD player. As a quick note before we start this demonstration, this demonstration is for Windows 7 operating system environments only. Other versions of Windows may be similar, but will not be mentioned in this how-to video. First off, in order to carry out this task, you need a very small list of things to obtain. A computer with a CD drive. This indicates that, of course, you have one built in, which majority of them do. If not, you can buy one online that is external that you can plug in via USB port. Another object you'll need is a blank CD, preferably one that says CD-R. This means it's writable, indicating that it is not rewritable, meaning that once the audio tracks are on there, there is no longer taking them off or rearranging them. These can be easily bought from Amazon.com, local electronic stores, and they're pretty fair priced. Another thing we'll need, the bulk of this demonstration, is a ripping slash burning software, preferably iTunes. This comes, of course, built in on Mac, but of course we're using the Windows environment, so you will have to go and download that from apple.com slash iTunes, and um, I will be demonstrating this shortly. But as a quick side note, I'm not here to teach you how to download, so if you need any extra assistance downloading, sore out of luck on that one, sorry. The last item we'll need is the CD that you want to rip slash burn. For this demonstration, I'll be using a Beatles album that I cherish profusely, Magical Mystery Tour. Okay, now that we have our list of things out of the way, let's begin, shall we? After downloading the proper version of iTunes, locate the Downloads folder on your computer and double-click the icon that says iTunesSetup.exe. Click the button that says Run when the first initial window pops up. After that, it will gather some information about your computer to see where to install it. The next few menus are just some general information about iTunes, such as where to install, what its purpose is, and uh, pretty much just straightforward, so we can just click right through this. After the main crux of the menus, you will be brought to the installation progress bar. I'm going to fast forward through this for obvious purposes, but when it's done, you'll get a final menu that uh, states, congratulations. Just uh, make sure to leave everything checked on this menu and click finish, and now you have iTunes. Now that we have iTunes opened, we can now configure the preferences that will make our process flawless. At the very top left of the screen, there's a little drop-down menu. Click on that and go to the option that says Preferences, and then once that's open on the Preferences menu, there's a little option that says Import Settings. Under this new menu, make sure to just uh, highlight the thing that says AAC Encoder and change it to MP3 Encoder. This is going to make it so much easier, higher quality, and just overall a better experience. When ready, click OK, then OK, and then now we are done and we can begin importing our CD. In order to get the CD into your computer, open your CD drive, commonly done by pressing a button that says open or close, and place your designated CD that you want to duplicate onto the tray. The tricky part is to make sure you place it label side up, and also fit it into the notches for a snug fit so your CD doesn't break on its trip back into the computer. Close the drive, and get ready to use iTunes again. When the drive first starts reading your CD, iTunes will immediately ask, would you like to import the CD into your iTunes library? Of course, accepting this is our desire. Click yes, and now lean back and sip on your coffee, while the CD drive sounds like it's having several mini sequential heart attacks. Depending on the length and the amount of tracks in your album, it shouldn't take long, unless you're using an older hardware. In that case, get a second cup of coffee while you're at it. After your CD is done importing and bursting into flames, a neat noise will sound and you'll be able to eject the disc from the tray via the same way you put it in the first time. Just take it out and put it back into the holding case. You won't need the CD anymore for this instructional video. If not already done, get a blank CD ready to put into your computer. The nifty part is, now you can jam out to your album in iTunes right off of your computer. Just like before, place the CD, this time a blank one, onto the tray label side up and insert it into the computer. Once closed, head back to iTunes once again to set up the next step. Now that we have all of our music imported into the iTunes library, we can now make the list that is going to be transferred onto the new blank CD. To do so, click on the button that says Playlists, and it will bring up this menu that will do so. 
At the very bottom left of the playlist menu, there's a little plus button. Click that, press new playlist, and now we can start creating this list. With this new playlist option open, you should now be able to see the album you imported in the iTunes. When you click on it, it will list all the tracks that are on this album. To get these tracks onto the list on the right side of the screen, what you need to do is hold down the left shift button, click on the first track, in my case Magical Mystery Tour, and then, while still holding down shift, click on the last track of the album, in my case All You Need Is Love, and now you should be able to click anywhere within the highlighted area and drag it over to where it says to create a playlist, drag songs, albums, and artists here. And now, everything on that list you just highlighted will now be in your playlist. Also, for reference purposes, we can rename the playlist the name of the title of the album, and uh, once we're done, press the Done button. And now it should return you back to the playlist menu. Now we are ready to burn this CD, but not literally, because that is extremely dangerous. After making sure that your playlist is selected in the left side column of the playlist menu, go to the very bottom left side of the screen, next to the plus button, and there should be a little uh, cog wheel looking gear thing. Click on that, and there should be a sub option that says burn playlist to disc. Click that. After the burn menu pops up, there is no need to change any of the options, just click burn, get your coffee, and get ready for another wait. Here we go. Once it finishes burning, you can now eject it from the drive, and now you hold in your hands an exact duplicate of the original starting CD. But we aren't done yet. Before we do anything else with the CD, I recommend you test it in your favorite CD reading device. In my case, my favorite is the Xbox 360, just because it accepts a lot of formats of CDs, DVDs, and uh, whatnot. To tell apart from other duplicated CDs, just take a Sharpie marker or some other lightweight permanent marker and write the title or artist and whatever other notes may be needed to help you distinguish from other great backups in your collection. As an optional thing, you might want to buy CD sleeves just to protect your new CDs from getting scratched or destroyed in some other fashion. They are extremely cheap and just like the blank CDs can be found in an electronic store or even better, online. Now that you've made your first duplicate CD, I'm guaranteeing you'll make more. Maybe even take multiple CDs, take favorites from all of them, and make a mixed CD full of your favorite tunes. Thanks for watching this how-to instructional video on how to duplicate a CD. I hope you guys enjoyed.